An update to the Crash Bandicoot 4 microtransaction situation has a lot of people very confused and I'm going to try to make some sense of it. The massive Xbox Series X event has been unveiled for July and there's some very interesting things that coincide with it. My July Nintendo Switch games video is no longer outdated because one of the games we just talked about yesterday is now delayed which is absolutely bizarre and Paper Mario the Origami King gets some new details about the game and honestly this is shaping up to be an epic adventure. What's going on guys I'm RGT85 if this is your first time on the channel be sure to hit that subscribe button but without any further ado let's talk about what's going on in the world of video games. So a few days ago on the channel we of course talked about Crash Bandicoot 4 It's About Time which is the latest Crash Bandicoot game coming to us from Activision and Toys for Bob. Now of course Toys for Bob has done a lot of games recently the Spyro Reignited trilogy and of course the Crash Insane trilogy and while I wasn't the biggest fan of Crash Bandicoot growing up as I wasn't playing those games on the PlayStation one in retrospect I've definitely grown to appreciate these games and I think Crash Bandicoot 4 looks absolutely amazing but there was some controversy surrounding the game and microtransactions within this game because the listing for the game on the Microsoft Store actually showed that the game would feature in-game purchases meaning that there would be some sort of microtransactions or DLC with the game and a lot of people were sort of off put by this of course this is a $60 release when it comes out in October so some people were confused by the situation as to what sort of microtransactions transactions would there be of course there's additional costumes within the game that if you pre-order the game you have access to these costumes so people were thinking well maybe there's going to be some cosmetic stuff maybe it could be some additional levels but now toys for bob is actually taken to twitter and said the following we're seeing some confusion about microtransactions in Crash Bandicoot 4, and we want to be crystal clear. There are no microtransactions in Crash 4. As a bonus, the totally tubular skins are included in all digital versions of the game. So now if you buy the game digitally, no matter if you pre-order the game or not, you get these additional skins that are available in the game for free, which I think is pretty cool, but that still begs the question. Why would the Microsoft Store listing have that there are in-game purchases on the listing for this game? This is something that coincides with the ESRB when you're actually rating a game if there's going to be some sort of microtransactions or potentially DLC for the game then you have to talk about it in the game listing that's why these things are becoming prevalent because of things like loot boxes and stuff like that the more predatory things now the more innocent things that are actually done in games have to be detailed as well so what sort of in-game transactions are there going to be some people are thinking that there could be potentially DLC for this game but once again if the game isn't even out yet why are we even considering DLC for this game I don't know it's a very confusing situation I do think at some point in time there is going to be some sort of in-game purchase it might not be necessarily a micro transaction but they didn't say that there wouldn't be additional DLC that you could pay for as well with Crash Bandicoot 4 but really it's just a strange situation and to have Toys for Bob come out and say that there is no micro transactions but they didn't really comment on DLC does sort of show that there may be some sort of roadmap for this game all in all I'm still excited for this game it's still gonna be worth the six dollar purchase to me it's something i'm really looking forward to but toys for bob did clarify the situation so i wanted to give you guys an update so we've been talking about the Xbox Series X and Xbox Series S a lot on the channel lately, and now we finally have some concrete dates of when the Xbox Series X event is going to happen. Jeff Keighley with Summer Games Fest is actually teaming up with Xbox. There's going to be a huge thing going on with this situation. Between July 21st and July 27th, there's going to be an Xbox Summer Games Fest demo event, and essentially what you'll be able to do during this event is boot up your Xbox One and play demos of up to six 60 different games right in the comfort of your own home which is something I think is absolutely fantastic this is something that we have been wanting to see the video game industry sort of do with the ever-growing decline of things like e3 and of course you know the whole situation going on in the real world where many conventions are being canceled there's no really good way to play demos for these games so now you're beginning to be able to get a show floor like experience in the comfort of your own home on your Xbox one now of course another thing that is going to happen during this event at some time between July 21st and July 27th will be the Xbox Series X event where we're going to learn about the first party games coming to us from Microsoft of course Perfect Dark is still being very heavily rumored I really think Perfect Dark is definitely going to be there at this event it's something that is just one of the worst kept secrets at this point it does definitely look like Microsoft is gearing up for a Perfect Dark for the Xbox Series X but I'm definitely looking forward to this presentation it does kind of suck that it is happening towards the end of July I think some people were hoping that 
that it would be towards the front of July. So, well, there'd be some fun stuff to talk about. But Microsoft is obviously doing this situation very calculated, looking at what the PlayStation 5 is doing and just sort of trying to counteract what they're doing. I think it's going to be a great event for Microsoft. I'm really looking forward to seeing what first party games they are going to have at this event. They did also clarify that there are going to be some third party games at this event as well. So I'm interested to see if they have a better lineup of games than we saw with the initial unveiling of the Xbox Series X. There wasn't really all that many just sort of wow, you know, sort of moments with the third party games that we saw from the Xbox Series X event a few months ago. So I am hoping that they do sort of improve that lineup of games, but it's going to be a very exciting time. We're going to get a ton of details from it and it's just a few weeks away, but I'm definitely looking forward to checking out some of these game demos. And I think this could sort of be a transition for the video game industry. I hope companies like Sony and Nintendo sort of copy this because I think it would be absolutely awesome. Here's a weird situation. You might remember yesterday on the channel, we talked about some games coming to the Nintendo Switch in the month of July. And one of those games, probably the most impressive game, was of course Crisis Remastered. Now Crisis Remastered was supposed to have an event today on July 1st, and they were going to show a gameplay trailer for the game, and then the game was going to be announced as coming out on July 23rd. So I was really looking forward to this. I've never played the first Crisis game. Obviously, you know, Kid It Run Crisis is sort of a meme and things like that. So I was definitely looking forward to checking this out i played crisis 3 on the xbox 360 but i wanted to see the game that sort of started out the crisis franchise and made it so popular well like i said today there was supposed to be an event for crisis and they were supposed to show off the gameplay trailer and then talk about the release date for the game but right before it was supposed to happen the crisis twitter account actually tweeted out the following as you know, Crisis Remaster will be coming into the world this year, and at the same time, the Crisis IP will debut on the Nintendo Switch. Your passion for the Crisis franchise deserves an undeniably high-quality game, and we're committed to delivering that. To ensure that we meet that commitment, we'll need to delay the launch date, all platforms, and trailer premiere by a few weeks. Because they already started, pre-orders for the Switch will stay open, but pre-orders for other platforms will be delayed as well. So basically, I'm guessing what has happened with the situation is that leaked trailer that some people were questioning that I was talking about in yesterday's video was the actual trailer for this game, and there was a lot of feedback on it. Some people seem to be pretty disappointed with it. It didn't quite look as good as they wanted it to. So now Crisis is delaying the game before really even announcing the game, because you gotta remember, the release date aspect of it came from a Microsoft Store listing, and that was also put into conjunction with a Nintendo Switch listing for the game that is currently up where you can pre-order the game but delaying a game before you even announce the release date of a game or even release a trailer for the game because the trailer leaked before you had a chance to announce it it's it, just a bizarre situation like video games in 2020 is just such a weird thing there's been so many weird things that have happened with video games companies delaying games it's just so bizarre to see this happening with crisis because i think so many people were looking forward to this game and now they're going to have to wait again even though though we already had a release date for this game how much are you going to be able to put into this game to sort of fix the aspects that people are having with this game as far as graphics are concerned i'm not quite sure but yes one of the games that i was looking forward to in the month of july crisis remastered for the nintendo switch and on all platforms is getting delayed so so yeah my nintendo switch games for the month of july video isn't really all that dated anymore because crisis has been delayed so i guess kind of thank you and finally, of course, the big game for the Nintendo Switch in the month of July is Deadly Premonition 2, A Blessing in Disguise. I guess there's that other game, Paper Mario the Origami King as well. But all jokes aside, Paper Mario the Origami King, I think looks absolutely fantastic. Everything we've seen from this game so far, I think looks really promising. I think the environments look really cool. The graphics look absolutely beautiful. The combat system seems decent enough. And it seems like it'll have that sort of humor that we've come to expect from the Paper Mario series. It definitely looks more like the classic Paper Mario games, more so than, well, Sticker Star and things of that nature. But during a recent interview with Game Informer magazine, we actually I got some very interesting details about how this game is actually going to work as far as traversing through the world and it's not what I expected it to be I didn't expect Paper Mario the Origami King to essentially be sort of an open world style game but that's what it appears to be so Masahiko Magaya who is the producer of this game from Intelligent Systems actually said the following in this game in former interview one major feature that makes the world where this adventure takes place special is that there are huge maps to explore at every turn because the game 
game is laid out this way, we are careful during the design phase to make sure that there is always something in the player's field of vision to catch their attention. Essentially what they're doing with this game is sort of going away from the chapter segments where you are just sort of regulated into going into a certain area at a certain time and making a more open world experience. Now I'm not saying that this is going to be a Breath of the Wild style experience, but seeing things in the distance and knowing that you can go there at some point in time definitely does feel a bit more like Breath of the Wild. So I think this is obviously going to be a huge win for this game because of the exploration aspect. Of course you have the thousand fold arms that allows you to do different things when you're in the world, such as solve puzzles and tear things down and find hidden secrets, and I think this game is going to be chock full of hidden secrets. It definitely doesn't seem like a streamlined action RPG experience like we saw with Sticker Star. It definitely seems more like an epic adventure that you're going to be going on with Paper Mario and his friends to stop King Ollie. So this whole open area aspect I think is definitely a huge win for this game. I'm really curious to explore these different areas that you're going to be put into and I really think Paper Mario the Origami King has a chance of being a huge sleeper hit. Maybe even a potential game of the year candidate. Everything I've seen from this game, everything I've heard from this game sounds really positive. So if it plays as good as it looks and sounds like it's going to, I think this game could be a huge win for Nintendo Switch owners and I can't wait to play it and it really it's just a few weeks away. All right, so that is going to do it for today's video. Lots of updates on previous stories from this week so far. And yeah, it's probably just gonna get even weirder as the week goes on. So let me know what you think of everything in the comments section down below. What sort of things will be implemented into Crash Bandicoot 4 if there's no microtransactions in the game? Do you see some additional DLC? Maybe even some kart racing stuff put into the game? Are you excited for the Xbox Series X event? Do you think that this whole demos at home thing is sort of the future of video games? What do you think about Crisis getting delayed before it was even really announced as having a release date. And finally, Paper Mario the Origami King. Are you in or are you out? You should definitely be in with that game. And as always, folks, thank you for checking out this video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. Videos might be a little bit light over the next few days. My birthday is this Saturday, so I'm going to be doing some celebrating and stuff. I plan on doing a live stream uh, probably tomorrow on Thursday on the channel, so make sure you guys pop in and say hey when I do that as well. And as always, folks, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Later.